Summer is ending and it feels like it never began. It went so quickly and all these moments I'm looking back on now feel like little snippets of nostalgia. It has been a rainy year here in Scotland and the rain soft and drizzly welcomed so many mushrooms late July and August. I've been trying to slow down but I'm still finding it very hard. So life feels like this big jumble of fast moving changes. I always really enjoy the transition of summer into autumn. For some reason, I find a lot more peace in autumn and just feel a lot more at ease. And I think I'm ready for that time of year again. As I'm recording this, I have a bit of a cold, so bear with me. Um, I set this vlog up in different um, categories in a way. So this is the foraging bit, and these are some of the things that I foraged, at least the ones that I filmed um, during summer, and now summer is ending. There's always this abundance of beautiful plants to harvest and sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed I'm like oh my god I want to spend time with all of you but I think I just kind of go with whatever I feel called towards or whatever I come across most frequently so yeah I hope you enjoy seeing what I've been up to in the realms of foraging So this here is Sweet Sicily. It's one of my favourites to forage. Um, it is, however, part of the Apiaceae or um, composite, like umbelliferous um, flower family. So it's related to really poisonous plants like hemlock. Sweet Sicily is really um, like star anise -y and makes a really wonderful tea. And the way to identify it is by looking at the little white splotches on the leaves. They're also very, very soft, like velvety. And we need 
the seas as well. So I'm just gonna boil all of this down. What is it? It's all down the line. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work. Makes them by just boiling down dandelion. Dandelion sweets. Like they were kind of like chewies. Wow. And I, I was like, how do you make them? And he says it's just dandelion. There's nothing else. I was like, what do you mean? It's like it's dandelion. You reduce it and then you like um, oh, strain it, and then you reduce it more, and it just becomes this big like dark gooey stuff. And then it just becomes sticky and you can roll it into like a licorice. So I hope he's right about that. Basically, I didn't film any more of it because I thought I was not going to be able to do it. Um, somebody just like told me how to do it. And I couldn't find anything on the internet. I couldn't find anything in any of the books that I have on how to make like a dandelion sweetie. Um, I don't know how long they will stay, like, you know, um, edible, but basically you can shape them into, like, little shapes. Um, and they taste a bit like licorice, just very nice. Um, and they're very bitter, and it's literally pure dandelion. Root, leaf, flower, stem, all of it. All of it in one. Um, I just, like, simmered it, simmered it, simmered it, then strained it, and then kept simmering it until all that was left was this, like, gloopy stuff that I just spread on this paper, um, baking paper, and then I was just a bit like, well, whatever, it's probably not going to dry or it's not going to actually turn into anything <laughs> edible, but it tastes exactly like the thing that um, I kind of based it on, and I'm really happy because I thought it wasn't going to work, but um, yeah, it's a lot of work, but I think they're really tasty, it's very bitter, it's very medicinal kind of feeling to it, but um, as I've said before, I love the taste of dandelion. Um, so highly recommend it. Not that highly, it's a lot of work, but I do highly recommend it if you really like dandelion and bitter things. Put them in a little tub, made them into little shapes. La la. I also dehydrated these, just like in the dehydrator for a bit. Because of the rain, there were so many chanterelles this year and it was the most magical feeling spotting these, even though we were kind of anticipating finding them in this one particular woodland near Edinburgh, it's still just the most magical experience when you find the first one and you realise you're surrounded by these incredible creatures. Um, when foraging mushrooms, obviously, only take a few, see, I'm, I'm leaving quite a few um, every time I'm harvesting from one patch and we got so many there was more than enough abundance for um, us and all the other forest critters and obviously the mushrooms themselves to reproduce it's safe to say we ate these for quite a few days after I had really nice pasta and I ate them for breakfast <laughs> This year I finally got to see the Bowman in South Queensferry. So this is quite an old tradition that, I don't know, dates back a few hundred years. Um, origins aren't entirely sure, but basically this person just gets completely covered in bars and there's like Bowman ice cream um, and lots of music and like stuff going on and basically he walks around the town and gets drinks at every pub um, and that's it. I think he brings good luck to the place basically. It felt pretty lucky seeing him.
Uh, if you're ever in Edinburgh, second Friday of August, please go see the Bowman. He's so lovely. Also, apparently to be the Bowman, you have to be born in South Queensferry. Summer was quite busy for me and various little projects that I was working on, um, one of which is a collection of woodcuts um, about mushrooms and witchcraft and links between the two, but also um, ethnomycology, basically. You'll see more about this very soon. There's going to be some zines that you can get, hopefully. But yeah, it's taken a lot of time to research for this project and it means that I get to spend quite a lot of time in the library at the Botanic Gardens which is amazing by the way there are so many books on mushrooms and I could just sit there forever and ever and have a wonderful time especially the really old mushroom guides they are so filled with magic um yeah aren't they amazing I could just sit there and look through these pretty much forever forever and ever <laughs> biggest mushroom nerd energy anyway um i'll update you on this project very soon Apart from the woodcuts, I have actually finished a zine, um, which is a queer mycology zine. It's riso printed, riso riso printed. I'm never really sure how to pronounce it, but um, so it basically means there's very limited amount of them. Um, by limited, it's fifty. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be selling these very soon, but I still need to go pick them up from the printer. So that's why they're not available yet. Very sorry. <laughs> anyway, it was very fun making the zine, although it was also quite difficult, and I didn't really understand the printing process at first, but. I do now, and I have already shared a PDF version of the Queer Mycology Zine on Patreon, so if you want to support me on there, um, have a little peek.
haven't filmed a whole lot of the front garden or any other gardens that I've been doing gardening at, but yes, it's very much part of my life now. Um, I feel like when you start gardening, you can't really stop. It kind of becomes part of you. Recently, the sunflowers in front of our door started flowering and it's made such a difference to the way it feels to come home or step outside. There are lots of hoverflies and bees and sometimes even butterflies now. And we didn't have that last year because we didn't grow as many flowers. Um, overall, I've just been taking it quite slow um, in terms of gardening, but it's been beautiful to see the fruits that summer brought and I actually froze quite a few to enjoy in the winter time. Have you been doing any gardening this year? Um, tell me about it. <laughs> Being invited to the King's Supper. <laughs> But let's not forget to celebrate the harvest. Summer feels like such an endless, strange time void to me most of the time. This year it did seem to pass quite quickly, but every year when the harvest festival starts to kick in and I can make corn dollies and pick ground berries and pick apples and St John's ward, that's when it really starts to slow down. It feels like the season is coming to this more settled, um, gentle pace. And I love to make apple pie for the harvest feasts. Um, this year I celebrated with some friends and everybody brought some bread um, and it was really magical. Before I end the vlog, I wanted to give you a little peek into my weaving and foraging that I've been doing for um, crafts, mainly basket weaving. Um, it's been really fun exploring with different materials that I haven't really used much before, and currently that has been the yellow flag iris. Um, it's a really good strong weaver. It's really noticeable how plants vary when you weave with them and I think that's what I like about weaving. You really have to tune into the material and feel what its limits are by doing so you know you can read as much as you like about it but the only way that you really are going to learn is by actively trying it with your own hands and engaging all your senses and that's a really beautiful way of learning I think so 
this summer I've given a lot of time and dedicated a lot of time to getting to know new materials and working with new materials and now of course in hindsight there are plenty of things that I would have done differently making these baskets but I'm just very grateful that these grow relatively near where I live and um, that I get to work with them. So huge gratitude for Yellow Flag Iris. You're amazing. <laughs> Such a great plant, honestly. If you're starting out trying to make baskets, go for like Bulrush and Yellow Flag Iris or Dandelion, which is also really good. Um, I got so excited about this basket that I took it everywhere until it kind of, don't know, started to get moldy because a lot of things get moldy in my home. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's that. It's a great foraging basket. There's something so nice about just being able to weave next to um, a body of water and you get to like soak your materials in a pond nearby and then you just get to sit there and weave and it's just the most peaceful thing ever. I love it. It makes me feel really happy. <laughs> wanted to just say hello briefly and um, show you a little basket that I've been making today. Um, it's made out of bramble and willow. Uh, I think it still has to dry quite a bit. Like the bramble was re-soaked but the willow, I used it fresh for the hoops. So yeah, there's also a bit of holly in it for the stakes. Anyway, oh, some bits falling out of it. <laughs> it's very wonky but it's very deep so I think it'll be quite good for picking like maybe hazelnuts or rome berries um yeah potentially brambles which is um pretty much now so very excited um anyway i hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully see you again soon <laughs>